My first guest is the senator from the great state of Missouri and author of the book Manhood, The Masculine Virtues America Needs Now. Senator Josh Hawley, thanks for coming on the program. Thank you for having me. Uh, before we get into the book, I've, I've got to ask you, uh, give me your take on last night's vote in the House of Representatives. I see that some of your colleagues, Rand Paul, Mike Lee, Rick Scott, and others are saying it's a no-go for them. I'm a no vote on the debt ceiling increase, and I'll tell you why. It doesn't do anything to address what I think is arguably our most important deficit, which is our trade deficit with China. Every dollar of that trade deficit represents jobs lost in this country, business lost in this country, industry lost in this country. And this deal doesn't do anything to get tough on China, to get industry back in America, our critical supply chain. So I'm going to be a no vote. Uh, just is there any fairness in saying that 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 what McCarthy did is addressing only the debt? This is not an appropriations bill. This is not the budget. This is completely separate from that. Uh, no, I think that there's no. I think he negotiated on the budget. I mean, this is a, this is a budget bill, at least in part. It does set the overall spending levels for the next year, the next fiscal year. So no, this is really a vote on on the budget, uh, at least in the overall picture. And, uh, you know, that's, it's not one I'm going to vote for. All right, let's talk about the book. Um, you know, toxic masculinity, that just means being a man to some people on the left. It's Pride Month. We don't know what a man is, right, do we? We have a Supreme Court justice doesn't know what a woman is. And, and one of the things that jumps out at me, and you've said this a lot, is that the cultural Marxists want to rid us of masculinity. And I, can, I only see it like this. The, a father. And I said this to you off air, as a younger man, I couldn't see myself. I didn't know what it meant to be a father and a husband. Now I am a father and a husband. I'm the provider, not the state, me. It's my job to raise my children. It's my job to provide for them. The left wants the state to do those functions. Absolutely. What the left wants is to replace men and fathers with big government. I mean, that's really their whole agenda. And so they tell men that they should be passive. They tell men, go down to your parents' basement, boot up a computer, sit in front of the screen, order some stuff, watch whatever you want, be entertained, and otherwise shut up and don't rock the boat. We need to send men a different message, which is that they are needed and responsibility is a good thing. And the more of it you take on in your life, the more influential and significant you are and this country needs you to do it. You know, when we, we talk about masculinity, we're not talking about cartoonish tough guy behavior. We're talking about the role that God designed for men, right? You've spoken often about the biblical term, the, the biblical view of manhood. That's, we're not talking about going around telling everyone to punch us in the stomach and crushing beer cans on our heads. We're talking about the role that God laid out for us as men. Yeah, and what, and what that role really is, and I try to get into this in the book, is it's living for other people. It is taking on responsibility for the good of other people. It is putting others ahead of yourself. It's living self-sacrificially. Which you talk about something that the left never wants to hear. I mean, they're all about the gospel of self, you know, do whatever makes you happy, put you first. That's actually, though, not the path to significance. And as every husband and father knows, that's not the path to having a healthy marriage and a healthy family. We need to call young men to be husbands, to be fathers, to live for others. And you know what? Like, we're talking about school choice and we're watching parents. You know, I've, I've said whether it's Target or Bud Light or any of the things that are happening now, either the conservative media is that powerful or it's people who never counted themselves as conservatives are finding themselves being shoved hard in our direction. Look at the way education is run right now. We've almost made being a boy illegal. Oh, totally. You look at just the numbers on this, the data on this, it shows that kids, boys in kindergarten get interrupted by teachers when they're playing together far more often than girls do. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. They get diagnosed with ADHD and ADD and medicated, and they get prevented from bringing guns to school and toy soldiers and all the rest. And then as they get older, they get told that just to be a man is to be toxic. They get told that just to be a man is to make the world a worse place. And then finally they grow up and go to college where they're told there's no such thing as men or women at all. And men should be in women's locker rooms and women's sports. It is a crazy world the left has created. And we're now we're seeing that we're seeing the consequences of that, which is male depression, male suicide at all time highs and kids without fathers. You know, the other side of this is masculinity is not an affront to femininity. Masculinity needs femininity. We need the women in our lives. We need our spouses. We need our daughters. We need our mothers. And, you know, th that's the whole thing. When we think about Judeo-Christian values and, and the biblical sense, mother, 
father creates a family, which is the cornerstone of society. So promoting masculinity isn't an affront to femininity, it's a partnership. Absolutely, you know, strong men are men who can help and empower and protect strong women and the two work together. My wife says this to me all the time. She says, you know, a strong woman doesn't want to marry or be with a weak man. A strong woman wants somebody who can contribute to the relationship, you know, who brings something to the table. Strength goes with strength, right? So we need strong men to have strong women and vice versa. And that's something the leftist doesn't understand. They think that if you have a strong man, that means everybody else gets oppressed. Of course, and now they've really put their cards on the table. They don't even believe in women. They believe there's no such thing as women, that a man can be a woman and, and, and the opposite. It's totally crazy. We need to get back to what we know are the, the real truths here, which is we need strong men, we need responsible men, and we need them to take on responsibility for others. I will say this in closing. I think, and like I said, Bud Light, Target, these companies that have gone woke, they're, they're waking up people who never thought they were conservatives. And they're, they're pushing people socially in the direction that you describe in this book.